Hey everybody, welcome back to the Space News Pod. This is a show about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight. I'm your host, Will Walden. And we have to ask a question. Will SpaceX's Starship pose a challenge to NASA's Gateway Lunar Space Station? Now, according to a recent Government Accountability Office report, NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return humans back to the moon, may face complications due to the significant size of SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander. The report raises concerns about the station's ability to accommodate such a large vehicle without affecting its orbit and its functionality. The GAO study highlighted that the combined mass of Gateway's key components, the habitation and logistics outpost, or the HALO, and the power and propulsion element, or the PPE, exceeds the target limits set by NASA. Now, the study found that while the PPE meets current performance requirements, it may not be capable of properly steering the station when larger vehicles, such as Starship, are docked with it. The thing is massive. Now, NASA estimates the Starship's mass is approximately 18 times greater than the value used to develop the Gateway's PPE. This discrepancy raises concerns about the space station's ability to maintain its designated orbit and orientation, which are crucial for communication and also mission success. Now, the Gateway, which is NASA's planned lunar space station, is scheduled for an initial launch around December of 2027 to support the Artemis 4 mission. And Artemis 4, which aims for a crewed lunar landing, is set to launch sometime in 2028. Now, the GAO report indicates the Gateway must be in lunar orbit a year prior to this mission for evaluation and system verification. Now, as per the GAO, NASA's baseline capability for the Gateway launch is three months behind schedule, which complicates the timeline for the Artemis 4 mission. NASA plans to reassess the cost and feasibility of meeting the 2029 launch objectives in September this year, taking into account new challenges and risks identified. And this report also identifies mass as a critical constraint, not only for the space station itself, but also for the visiting vehicles. The combined mass of HALO and PPE surpasses NASA's set requirements, raising concerns about the station's overall performance and mission capability. Now, to address this issue, the mass issue, NASA may need to fly gateway components separately, which would increase costs or reduce the station's mass by eliminating some components, potentially impacting its functionality. Now, both solutions have significant trade-offs that NASA must consider. Now, despite the gateway, being above mass requirements, its PPE is insufficient to handle the increased mass of larger spacecraft like SpaceX's Starship. This impacts the station's ability to maintain orbit and proper orientation for essential communications with Earth. And NASA's managers acknowledge that while the PPE meets initial design phase requirements, these are inadequate for managing the 18 times greater mass of Starship. And to mitigate this, NASA plans to have visiting vehicles assist with some PPE functions and consider software upgrades to manage thrusters more effectively. Now, if these measures prove unsuccessful, though, redesigning the PPE could be necessary, which would introduce additional costs and further delay the Gateway program. This would complicate the already tight schedule for Artemis 4 and the subsequent missions going forward. And the Lunar Gateway, part of NASA's Artemis program, faces numerous challenges, including the technical difficulties and the scheduling risks. Um, the GAO said that the complex coordination required across multiple NASA programs, contractors, and international partners to successfully execute the mission is critical. Now, a defective network chip within the gateway poses another significant risk, potentially leading to communication failures and loss of control over the station. Uh, so a defect like this could cause flight computers to restart unexpectedly, disrupting mission operations. And the stack controllability issue arises because the massive size of SpaceX's lunar Starship makes it difficult for Gateway's PPE to maintain proper orientation when the two are docked together. This discrepancy based on an underestimated mass during the PPE's design phase threatens the stability of the entire mission. Now, the GAO report cast doubt on Gateway's utility for future Mars missions. NASA has envisioned the Gateway as a kind of staging area for human missions to Mars, but the mass and control issues pose significant constraints for hosting large Mars transit vehicles, such as Starship and beyond. Now, the planned 15-year lifespan of the Gateway 
may not be sufficient to support Mars missions, though, as it could surpass its operational life by the time such missions about the long-term value and sustainability of the Gateway project are answered. Now, NASA's Gateway program continues to evolve, though. They'll make the changes as they go, with components like the Habitation and Logistics Outpost, which is the HALO, undergoing testing right now. HALO, which is built by Northrop Grumman, will house international astronaut teams conducting scientific research and preparing for lunar missions. The Gateway will also feature modules from international partners, including the European Space Agency's Lunar View module and Japan's Advanced External Robotics. These components will dock with HALO, facilitating international collaboration and expanding the station's capabilities. And despite the technical and logistical challenges, NASA and its partners remain committed to Gateway's role in the Artemis program. This is central to NASA's vision of returning humans to the lunar surface and paving the way for future Mars missions with Starship and SpaceX. Now, it's complex. It's risky. The Gateway program, particularly concerning the integration of larger vehicles like Starship, is a huge deal. But addressing these challenges is crucial for the success of the Artemis missions and broader goals of Mars exploration in the future. Now, thank you so much for watching today. I appreciate your time. If you could take a second and hit the thumbs up, the like button, and the subscribe button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Because not only does it help me, but it also helps you because you get more spaceflight content in your feed. But also, if you could take a second and also do something incredible, which is leave a comment down below. I know it's tough sometimes. If you don't have anything really important to say, or if you just like kind of don't know what to say, just leave a rocket emoji. I want to see everybody interact here because it helps the algorithm. It'll help push this out because we need to get this information out there to the broader public of people that are interested in spaceflight. Now, again, thank you for watching today. If you really love this kind of uh, content, make sure to become a member of the channel. Join the flight crew. Helps out the channel, helps me out. I can continue to make these mission focused videos all the time for you. So again, that's it for today, everybody. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in the next one.